So let's talk about black swan events today. The US bond market has been crashing hard for the last few years. If you bought a 10-year bond in 2020, you'll be down almost 50%. And that's half of your money gone. Looking at the performance of US bonds, we can see a horrible crash down to the depths of hell. This is the biggest bond collapse in 150 years. All the gains over the decades have been returned. But here's the funny thing. The Federal Reserve hasn't been hiking rates since July, but the value of treasuries have been falling over the past few months. And the reason is simple. It's all because of supply and demand. Understand the crazy economic nightmare that we are in. There's a reason why Q3 GDP hit an insane 4.9%. That puts the US on par with China. And that's because of endless deficit spending that is hitting new heights. The US budget deficit has flown up by 23%, hitting a disastrous $1.7 trillion. Government spending accounts for around 30% of GDP. And that is keeping this economy on life support. But there's now a big problem with this endless borrowing. The more bonds crash, the higher yields go. And that is going to push the US government towards a fiscal cliff. And that's the point of no return where borrowing is simply impossible. Higher yields also push the real economy into distress. There's a limit to how much bonds can hit the market before yields start to skyrocket again. And this is why this major currency collapse might just be the black swan event that takes down the entire US treasury market. And I'm talking about the total collapse of the Japanese yen. Now, Japan has been doing yield curve control for over 7 years, right? The Bank of Japan, they have been buying an endless amount of Japanese government bonds to push down their own bond yields. And if you think the Federal Reserve has lost their minds, well, the BOJ is even crazier. The Bank of Japan currently holds over 53% of government bonds. And this is becoming a managed economy where the central bank has to prop up Japan by printing money. Now, a lot of people say that this is left pocket to the right pocket because money doesn't hit the streets. Sure, the central bank buys bonds directly from the government, so it doesn't really enter the banking system. But this is where the Keynesian economic nonsense all falls apart. Where interest rates were low, no one really noticed this. But now that global rates are going up, the unintended consequences have collapsed Japan's currency. The yen is on a one-way trip to the underworld. And as the yen descends towards the apocalypse, it could drag the US treasury market down to hell with it. And this just might be the black swan event we are all looking for. Now this crisis begins with the total collapse of the yen. It has now fallen to a historic 33-year low versus the dollar. And we have said before that the BOJ won't be able to defend the 150 to 1 exchange rate. And it has now crashed over 151 against the dollar. The Federal Reserve isn't going to cut rates anytime soon and US bonds won't recover anytime soon as well. And here's the environment that we are in. Biden is standing for re-election in November 2024, and the US is now funding two wars, guys. Two wars. One Ukraine and the other in the Middle East. President Biden is also running on the economy and as a wartime president. I know that's ridiculous, but it is what it is. His approval ratings are at an all-time low as well. Only 40% of Americans approve of Joe Biden, while a crazy 54% disapprove of him. And the majority of people are concerned about the economy. So he has to keep deficit spending high or the entire system, the entire economy will implode. And that means the Treasury has to issue more bonds to finance the US government. And this pushes up Treasury yields, which is bad for Japan. Investors, they see this big spread in bond yields, so they start to sell yen assets to buy dollars, to invest in treasuries. Now, if a Japanese bond is yielding 0 to 1%, but treasury bill yields 5%, the answer is very obvious which we are going for. Private investors will sell yen for dollar assets. You need dollars anyway, right, to operate in today's financial system. And this is why the yen has collapsed by at least 20% since the start of the Fed rate hikes. And now US deficit spending is going to complete Japan's currency collapse. And when the yen collapses, it makes almost everything in Japan more expensive. The entire country imports a ton of food and fuel from the world. And those imports are priced in, you guessed it, US dollars. So energy and food inflation is soaring in Japan. And this is causing a cost of living crisis. And here's how bad the crisis really is. The Japanese government, Kishida, just announced a crazy $113 billion stimulus package for the country. That's 17 trillion yen of stimulus. 
They are going to increase government spending and energy subsidies. And this also includes giving direct payouts to people as well. We are essentially back to the 2020 lockdown stimulus. This is money printing all over again, which is throwing fuel to the fire. And listen to this. The spending plan will boost Japan's GDP by around 1.2% on average over the next three years. Japan is trying to zombify their economy, but this won't really solve the inflation problem. It will just be a blip and the yen will continue to crash. The only country that can print money without immediately collapsing their currency is the United States. They hold the reserve currency of the world, but Japan does not. This stimulus package is a knee-jerk reaction, not a long-term solution. They have essentially hit a panic button. And let's realize why this currency crisis is bad for the US as well. It puts the US bond market in a very sticky situation. Japan now only has two options to save the Japanese yen. The stimulus is only going to kick the can down the road. It's just a tactic to stall for time. Japan can either go through door number one, door A, and they dump their US treasury holdings. Or they can go through door number two and hike interest rates. And here's the crazy thing. Both are bad for the US bond market. And let's talk about door A first. Why Japan might dump their US bonds to prop up the yen? Remember the stimulus that Kishida is pumping to the system? If we include in their fiscal measures, the total stimulus size is nearly 40 trillion yen. The majority of that money is going to come from even more debt. Japan obviously can't do this forever because it will lock them into a world of low interest rates, which will crush the yen even further. Their debt to GDP is over 260%. And if this continues, they will never be able to hike interest rates anymore. The interest payments alone will destroy their economy. That's why the Bank of Japan might be forced to sell their US bond holdings to get dollars to defend their currency. Japan currently holds around $1.1 trillion worth of US Treasury bonds. Over the past 12 months, they have sold around $80 billion worth to prop up the yen. Now, if Japan decides to dump more bonds to rescue their currency, this will remove a very important buyer of treasuries. The supply will also increase, putting upwards pressure on yields. Now, this is the lesser of two evils. The real disaster happens if Japan decides to walk through door B, door number two. If Japan doesn't want to outweigh the Federal Reserve, they could start to pivot and hike rates instead. If they decide to hike rates, then it might inflict a death blow on US Treasuries, especially at this point in time where Congress can't stop spending. But it's already starting to happen. Japan can't defy gravity forever. The BOJ is looking to exit their decade-long accommodative regime sometime in 2024. Interest rates in Japan will start to go up not because they want to, but because the market is forcing their hand. The pressure is just too high. We can see interest rates continuously challenging the upper bounds of the Bank of Japan's cap. Sooner or later, they will be forced to redefine an even higher bound, an upper bound. It is now at 1%, but the BOJ will have to allow interest rates to rise to 1.5% or even 2%. There isn't much choice left. The market is already calling their bluff. Ueda is far above his 0% target. He has lost control and when rates go above 1%, he will likely shoot up even further, which is going to be terrible for the US Treasury. And here's why. When yield starts going up for Japanese bonds, this will start to lure Japanese investors away from US Treasuries. They will start to move back towards Japanese bonds. When Japanese bonds yields rise, the currency will start to strengthen because now you can get a return on yen denominated assets. Suddenly, the yen will climb by 5 to 10% versus the dollar. The currency risk is now reversed against the US dollar. The tables have turned. And this will pull money away from US bonds and flood the market with a ton of supply. Japanese investments in US debt are already starting to enter negative territory. And if this momentum continues, especially if the BOJ announces a pivot, we could see trillions of yen worth of treasuries being dumped in a single week. There will be a disaster for US bonds and cause yields to either spike back up or at least stay much higher for longer. Now, whether it is dumping their bonds to defend the yen or raising interest rates, Japan has their back to the wall and it all has to do with the Middle East crisis. There's a reason why Japan pleaded with Saudi Arabia and the rest of OPEC plus to increase oil production. That's because they know their energy crisis could get from bad to worse. Japan has been doing quite a few things to show their enormous dependence on oil imports. The first was buying Russian oil above the G7 price cap of $60. We can all remember that. That is a clear sign that Tokyo needs cheap energy to run their industries. If energy prices keep climbing up, their industries will start to collapse just like Germany. 
they'll start to lose their manufacturing base to China, which has access to cheap Russian gas. According to the EIA, 38% of Japan's energy consumption comes directly from oil. In fact, only 13% comes from renewable energy. If the price of oil starts to spike up, inflation will spike up as well, while their manufacturing will come crashing down. But it gets worse. Japan's reliance on Middle East oil is their actually's heel. I've never seen such a dependence on a single region before. Japan imports 95% of their crude oil from the Middle East. This includes the big producers like Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Just look at the location of Saudi Arabia and the UAE. Those oil shipments will have to go through the Strait of Hormuz, which is in constant danger of getting shut down. Iran is in control of the choke point, which escalates the risk even further. So if a shutdown happens, Japan will lose virtually all of their oil supply. This will cause oil prices to spike even harder for them. So if prices goes up by $20 a barrel globally, it might be $50 higher for Japan because they need to scramble to get new oil supplies. They have to offer more money to lure away existing supplies. So we have to watch what happens in the Middle East because it affects Japan much more than we all think. The Bank of Japan can't control what happens in the Middle East. If the Israel war spirals out of control, you have to make a decision. They will either sell more treasuries directly to defend the yen, Ueda might start selling dollars and buying up yen all over again, or they will hide interest rates to pull money away from America back to Japanese bonds. And either outcome is a nightmare for US treasuries and by extension, the US economy. So Japan is setting up the bond market for a big fall. US treasuries by right should be a rock solid market. It's supposed to be a boring investment where yields shouldn't move much. But we now have the perfect storm. It is already here. The US government is funding two wars, volatile energy prices are now the norm, and the dollar is being weaponized. There's just too much supply of bonds versus demand. According to the global bank, SOCGEN, massive supply of US bonds is the key explanation for rising yields because of rising term premium. Investors are demanding higher yields to hold US debt because the risk is just too high. Japan's currency collapse might be the black swan event that takes down everything. If the BOJ decides to hike rates while the US government keeps spending higher, keeps spending more and more money, this could collapse the bond market even further. And you best believe more money and spending is coming. Just look at the trend of the cumulative budget deficit for 2023. The trajectory is up and up. The US government is spending more and more money today and that is even challenging the lockdown levels of 2020 and 2021. This is the true extent of the borrowing crisis we all have. And when you throw in another war in the Middle East, do you think borrowing for 2024 next year will go up or do you think it will go down? So Japan could be that final straw that breaks the camel's back. This might just be the black swan event that takes us all down. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Will Japan start dumping treasuries all over again? Or will they do a pivot and start hiking rates? Let me know in the comments below. Stay safe, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe as we navigate through these crazy times.